artist. I'm an artist. I paint and draw. I paint and draw. And I like to play with clay. And I like to play with clay. I have fun every day. I have fun every day. Hi, my name is John Lentine. I'm an art teacher at Locust Grove Primary School in Locust Grove, Virginia. I'd like to say a special hello to all you Oat K-12 campers out there, and I'd like to introduce you to a special guest who's going to help us with our lesson today. His name is Mr. L-19. He's an art teacher robot. We'll get to him in a second, but we're, today we're going to do some Oat of this world work with oil pastels. And I have a group of children here. Children, do you like oil pastels? Yeah! Okay, so here we go. Um, Let's call up Mr. L-19 and see what he has to say. Let me dial in his number. Come in, Mr. L-19. Come in. Hello. This you... is Mr. L-19. Hello. Trying to reach planet Earth. Say hi. Hi. Thought I heard something. Can you hear us? Is, is that you, Mr. L-19? Yes, it's me right here. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, it's a hi. little shaky. I can't hear it. Speak a little louder. Hi. That's good. I'm starting to see if there's little. There you go. I see you. Great. Okay, let me see. Ah, there you are. Well, good morning, Mr. Lentine. Good morning, Mr. L19. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. And uh, wow, I see you've got a crew of children there. Yes, they're eager and some Oat K12 can you wave campers. To meet children, so I can make sure I see. And there's you. the Oat K12 Great. camper. See. Um, what grade are you in? Kindergarten. And which class are you in? Oh, I've heard a lot about you. Well, this will be fun. And then Mr. L-19 took us on a tour of outer space. We saw planets, we saw stars, comets, the aurora, the sun, and rocket ships. Then we were ready to work. Okay, so I asked Mr. L-19 to send us down some materials that we would need for today. Mr. L-19 beamed in some beautiful oil pastels and a piece of black construction paper. This one is 12 by 18. Now, let's start with some stars. Stars can be many colors. They can be red, orange, yellow, blue, white. And I'm going to start off with some white stars that are far away. So far away things are very small. So I'm just pushing some stars on here. I'm not tapping, I'm pushing. About a dozen of them spread all over the paper. There we go. All right. Far away stars. Now, I want a closer star, so I make an X. A little bigger, just like this. Just a few here and there, wherever they want. And I'm going to put color in each one of them now. So let's take red. Let's put a little bit of red right in the center. There we go. Now I'm going to take some orange on this one. And I'll put some yellow on this one. Students can use whichever colors they like. Okay, now the fun part comes. First, I'm going to take a little more white and put it on top of each one. White is the key to any of these techniques in case you have a hard time doing this next part. See how I smear them from the center going out in all directions in a radial way, like the rays of the sun. I go out from the middle and look at its smear just with my finger. Look at that. Now, this one is a little hard to do, so I'm gonna take some extra white and put some more in the center, especially so I can see those directions in between, those big rays, look at that. Very good. Here we go with the yellow one. Yellow, just like our sun. Very good. Of course, remember, tell them that the sun is a star. Great. Okay, how about a comet? Let's first of all make a, a nice white blob with a little bit of a tail. There you go. And let's take the primary colors. Good chance to review the primary colors. Put a little bit of each one in there. There's some red and some yellow. And we'll put a little bit of blue, a little blue squiggle. Okay, now hold the paper down and with one good motion, 
right down there. Smear and make a, a cool sound. Pew, pew. And there you go. Nice comment. Don't do it again because it'll get muddy. Maybe just one time if it didn't come out very well. Okay. All right. Let's try the Aurora, known as the Northern Lights. Or, depending on where you are in the world, could be the Southern Lights as well. I learned a fact about the Northern Lights and the Southern Lights that they are mirror images of each other. I heard that a while back and I thought that was pretty fascinating. Okay, so I started out with a layer of white, then green, then red. And there you go, smear them up and you get a pretty good picture of the aurora. I lived in Alaska for over 30 years and I could see that every night in the certain times of the year, right above my driveway. Beautiful. Okay, maybe a couple planets. Let's uh, see if we can make the Earth just a quick visual, you know, hint of the Earth. You could use a little white atmosphere, add some blue for water, put some maybe green and brown in there for land. Smear it around a little bit. Make it purposely ambiguous. That nice and round. There you go. And now one that is pretty recognizable. Let's make a half circle here with blue. Color that in. Skip up a little bit. Make another one. Leave some space there. And you probably have an idea what's going to go there. Take a contrasting color and make a big ring around it. That's right. Hook it around. There you go. Now you've got Saturn. Kids love this. Okay. How about a rocket ship? You can make any kind of rocket ship you want to. It's just pretty basic. Triangle and a rectangle together. Add some nice rocket fins. There you go. Let's make uh, the, the fiery flame projecting the, the rocket out there. Or use some just red and yellow and white. It's kind of like a mini comet. Hold it and smear it. I'll do it a second time. There you go. All right. You can color it in any way you want to. You can even put somebody flying the ship in a window. That would be cool. All right. Now I'm going to do... Oh, no, not up here. We want to do a sun. Everybody wants to put the sun in the corner. Let's put it over here. This is a real close-up star. Okay, so I'll fill that in, and now I add the secret ingredient, some white along the edge. The more white you put, the more it's going to smear. I don't know why that is, but white just makes it all better. Let's see how that looks. Hmm. Should add a little more. There you go. Okay. So that looks pretty good right now. These are the basics. And we can do some other projects from here. Let's color this in a little bit. We can make a star nebula. We can do a space station. But I use shapes and we call that a shape station. You can do all sorts of things with an outer space theme. I'll show you some in a minute here, but there you go. For now, this will be good. Let's move the uh, dish of oil pastels aside and get some stars over there. Far away stars. Sometimes you can smear these and turn them into mini comets. Okay, let's show Mr. L19 what we've done. Are you there, Mr. L19? Hello. Students, this is Mr. L19 again, checking in. Hi, Mr. Lenteen. Hi, Mr. L19, we're doing great. It's going that well, huh? Okay, good. Well, I just want to take a look at what you're doing. Hold up your pictures. The students were very happy to show their work. Wow, look at that. 
Very nice. Good job. Okay, star is far away and star is close by. Very cool. Okay, looking good. I'm going to check back with you later. I have to go make sure everything's okay outside of the spaceship, okay? All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you in a bit. Next, Mr. L-19 took us on a tour of nebulas, clouds of gases in space, where scientists believe stars are born. Mr. L-19 even beamed in to surprise us and show us many types of nebulas. We were happy. He told us that scientists give these nebulas names because of their appearance. Here we have the squid nebula in the upper left, below that is the butterfly nebula, and then the horsehead nebula. This artist is making his nebula a dog. This is the dog nebula. Now how do we prepare these? We can prepare them in a class for the next class, as you'll see right here. This is how we do it. First, you take some red tempera paint and randomly sprinkle it on the paper. And you'll learn how to do this and some yellow to get the best nebula effect. Then you take another piece of paper and put it over the top. And you lightly pat it a little bit so that it smears the paint around, not too much. And when you uh, are done with that, you pull it off and it creates a symmetrical one on that second piece of paper and you let them dry and then pass them out to your students the next day. You can do this with your students in class so they see the process and then you have the set for the next day and look now this is the Spider-Man Nebula. We change it into Spider-Man Nebula. Let's look at some more. This is the Baby Chick Nebula. Watch how it changes. There we go. There's the Baby Chick. This is, we call it the Space Shuttle Nebula. And now, meow, the Meow Nebula. Many types of nebulas. It's really cool. Let's talk about space stations. Space stations come in many shapes and sizes. That's why we call this next project Shape Stations. We see circles, we see rectangles, triangles, all sorts of shapes. We begin by cutting out shapes of construction paper, gluing them down and connecting them with lines and using our outer space techniques to make a nice picture. We can add an address label on here with information for the parents and a place for the student to sign their name. Those labels are a great communication device between you and your student's parents. This one explains the project and mentions that it is a STEAM project. Good information. Now let's look back at where I originally demonstrated the techniques. I fixed up the aurora a bit, added more color and fullness, and just tweaked everything some. Now more fun with nebulas. Take a look at this one. This is a like a lobster or crab nebula. And here is a roadrunner with our school mascot, the cardinal, on its back. You can really have a lot of fun with these. Students, this is Mr. L19 again, checking in. Whoa, hold on a minute, Mr. L19. Don't go yet. We have a surprise for you. We remembered how you told us that you love scanning the beautiful colors of flowers here on Earth. So we made up a project with oil pastels just for you. Here it is. Flower magic. Let's begin. Got my oil pastels. I've got some copy paper. I've got half pieces of copy paper. They can be scraps. I've got a piece of contrasting color paper and I'm ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these pieces of paper. I'll move this so you can see it better. I'm going to fold it in half the hamburger way. We call that the hamburger way as opposed to the hot dog way. And you fold it in half the hamburger way and you hold the fold and you're going to tear a bite out of this. You're going to pretend there's a bite. Now you could draw it if you want to. Just put it along there like that and then they could cut it out with scissors or with the craft scissors, whatever they want. But I like to teach them to, to tear and I want about that much on each side so it's nice and strong. So here I go. I'm just going to tear that walking back and forth with my thumbs. Back and forth. Make a nice little shape. Just like a bite. There you 
go. And I'm going to make sure that the bottom one comes in at a pretty steep angle. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like. That's going to be a nice little flower. Okay, so we put our paper back here. And we take our contrasting paper and we put it down. This is our grease up paper. I'm gonna take some blue, well, let's take some red first, and I'm gonna go all around the edge. And if I get some on the inside there on the red paper, that's fine, that's what it's there for, to keep the white paper clean. Let's put a little bit of blue around there very quickly. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go kind of high up on the paper, maybe about right there. And I'm just going to hold it down and I'm going to pull toward the middle. There you go, pulling toward the middle. And you'll see you get good mixes of that blue and the red. You don't have to press so hard. You want it to mix in different ways there. Okay, we lift that up. Whoa, we get a nice, very nice, very nice flower. Okay, now we're going to grease it up again. And we're going to do it again. You don't have to grease it up each time, but it, it works better, I think, if you do. Okay, so I don't want it right on top of that. I can look through and I can see I'm going to put this one over here. Pull it in. We'll do it one more time after this over on the other side. And I'll stop the camera and do it off screen just for speed. Look at that. That looks great. And I'll do it again. Oh, I didn't use the grease up paper. Okay, I'm using the grease up paper. A little blue. Put it over here. Pull in. You always want to use the grease up paper. I didn't before, but I put it on another sheet, so that was okay. Now you have your three flowers. Let's go ahead and put some color on the inside. There we go. That looks nice. Now we're gonna have that up there. We're gonna need a vase. So you could draw a vase like that um, and then tear it. What I did is I just uh, wanted to save some time, so I went ahead and tore it. You can see it over there. That's what the vase is going to look like. So I open it up. See that? Put it on the grease-up paper. I want this vase to be blue. I'm just going to put heavy blue around the edge. Don't go so fast that you tear it. All right. Then you're going to give the illusion of volume on here. Let's place it down right about there. When you spread this on the inside, you're going to go in a curve like this, like a smile, I tell them. Down and up, down and up, down and up. Just, a, just even a little hint of it works just fine. Down and up. Sorry about the shaky camera. There's the bottom. Of course, the top. So you create the illusion of a cool vase down and up. There you go. There's your vase. And now you're going to put all the flowers inside the vase. The stem will come down right straight. For some reason, it's hard for the kids to get them all in there. I don't know why, even I missed a little bit there. Now I could have a leaf, but again, for time's sake, I went ahead and cut it. I mean, sorry, I tore it. All right, so I'll grease that up. Okay, here we go, greasing it up. Now. And you have to be careful when you do this. You have to know which, which flower it's going to. Let's put one on this one first, make it easy. Okay, pull in in the direction of the veins of the leaf. Look at that. That looks nice. Make sure you find the end right there. This one's going to cover 
this stem. That's why it's good that they will mix. Okay, so now we know that this one is in front of that one. All right, let's grease it up a little more. Okay, this one will go over here. Very nice. And let's put this one behind that. So that one will be in front. So we just give a hint of the leaf like that. And we can see that that one goes in front of it. Okay, we're gonna speed up just to save some time. So a bit later, as you can see, we finished the leaves and we tore around the edge of the picture in a nice fashion, and then we put it on a piece of paper that brought out the flowers. Very nice. So, Mr. L19, I hope you like that, and I almost forgot. Here's one more quick idea you can use for any holiday. Let's pretend we're trying to make Valentine's cards. So you just take a piece of, a half of a piece of copy paper, so this is five and a half by eight and a half, fold it in half, and you've got a card ready. Take another piece like that, fold that in half, and you can draw a half of a heart or the symbol of the holiday, whatever the symbol of that holiday is. You can cut this out, or I like to tear it out. So I already started it here. I just tear it, and I complete the tear like that. Now I, take a, I, I save this, and I save this. I'm gonna need the positive shape, and I'm gonna need uh, the negative shape too, okay? So, I'm going to take this, and you can argue which one is the positive and which one is the negative. Uh, so, let's just take this and grease it up along the edge with red very quickly. A lot of red on there. Now, you could do the lettering afterwards. I did it first just to save some time. So, I'm going to put that right there. Look at that. I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to pull that color in. Might have made the lettering too close, but that's okay. You get the idea. Toward the center, I'm going to always aim for the center. Notice how I switch hands too, as I need to. Okay, get that off of there. There's your heart. And then when you open it up, then you take this piece Go around the outside edge. It's a little bit different. This is the inside. You put it right there and you pull it off. Like the rays of the sun coming out from the center. You take that off, you get that beautiful shape, and you can put I love you, Mom. And there you go. You've got your wonderful card. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you, Mom. There you go. Use it for any holiday. Have fun. And that brings us to a close, Mr. L19. I know you have to go off to another planet and teach art. So thank you for being here today, and thank you to all you K-12 campers for joining us too. I hope you had a good time with Mr. L19, with my students, and with me. And I hope that you'll find some of these oil pastel techniques very useful in your classrooms. We thank you for being a member of OAT K-12 and for all your contributions. And of course, for all you do for art education and all of our students. So, my advice, live long and pastel. Oil, that is. Have fun with oil pastels. I'm an artist. I paint and draw. I paint and draw. And I like to play with clay. And I like to play with clay. I have fun every day. I